What do you do with a boring pastor? <laughs> Coming up next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. Drinking a little Headbangers Brew this morning, our very own coffee. You can see it right there, almost not even in the screen. We've got the coffee, we've got the tea, we've got the mugs. It's our mug of the month. Give me the gospel, don't give me gimmicks. It's also a t-shirt. All of this and all the rest of our cool stuff Right here, we are metalwearefamily.com. Dear Pastor Bob, I've been a Christian for over 20 years now, but I find many pastors to be boring. They talk in such a slow and monotone voice, it's easy to fall asleep on them. And some pastors are so loud and obnoxious, they sound like nails on a chalkboard. I have a short attention span as it is, and boring pastors don't help. I hate to say that about those who are preaching God's word, but shouldn't they try and be more fun to listen to? I'm not looking for an entertainer. I just want to listen to a, a pastor preach without falling asleep or losing interest in his message. Do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, I do. I have a lot of thoughts on this. So there are a lot of boring pastors. There are. Not everyone is an interesting speaker. And especially those who have the gift of teaching, um, their, their enthusiasm is actually more in the study than it is in the presentation. They're good at it. And not all of them are real good at communication but they've got a wealth of knowledge. And then there are pastors, and a pastor shepherds his flock. They, they take care of the spiritual needs of the people. They're not necessarily a good speaker either. Well, who's the good speaker then? You know, it isn't a qualification. <laughs> it isn't. But I understand listening to someone who isn't very exciting, your mind starts to wonder, and I'm one of those too. Not that I have a short attention span, but all of us get bored if we're not challenged. So what's the answer here? Well, honestly, it's involvement. It is Socratic discussion. It is you being involved in the message. Now, <clears throat> I realize that most churches don't look this way, but they should. Our biblical mandate is to, you know, to share our spiritual gifts. And that's how we learn by combining them and having that kind of discussion, Socratic discussion. And we've talked about that many times here on this podcast. But there are some things you can do as you're listening to someone that may not be real exciting. Number one is take notes. If you're actively involved in the process, maybe not verbally, but in some way, you will listen and you will, you know, you won't lose interest. So why is that important? Well, for two reasons. One, that it holds your interest, obviously. And second, that you have the notes from the sermon. You know, if you ask people, what did your pastor preach on last week? Most of them couldn't tell you. That's kind of sad, isn't it? If you ask them, what did your pastor preach on yesterday? Many of them couldn't tell you. You know, we just don't retain it. And, and a pastor who is a good teacher, and you ought to have one of those where, you know, you're, you're actually learning and you're digging into the word and you're rightly dividing the word of truth. You ought to personalize it and retain the information. So one of the best ways to do that is to bring paper and pencil and write it down. 
Now, you know, it's a cool thing to just have, this is a Bible, but to have a notebook about this size. And if you have a, a notebook to write things in, and you use the same notebook every week, and you just bring, just simply bring that notebook, and you bring a pen, and between those two things, you write things down as they go, you stay involved, you're looking for the next thing to write, and not only are you involved in the process, but you've got the notes to take home with you. And you can look over them. You can begin to, you know, I would, in the back of the book, I would write a topical index. And I would say, you know, here are the dates that we did this talk and this talk. And, you know, here was a talk about this subject. Here was a talk about that subject. And, and you write those in, in the back, in a little bit of a topical index and make up one. It's not hard. And then you can always go back to your notes. You'll always know how to find them. You'll always know exactly what's there. But I think it's the responsible way to listen. One that I've done for so many years and I, I think you would really enjoy it too. I, I have, I still have my notes from pastors that I've said under 50 plus years ago. And, uh, and some of those notes are the notes that I use today in my teaching because they were good, they were formative and they still work today. I want you to take your Bibles for a minute and turn to Acts chapter two, verse 42. It's a scripture we use a lot. And uh, you say, well, Pastor Bob, why do you do that so many times? Because I want you to get used to turning to specific scriptures. When questions pop up in your head, you're gonna say, oh yeah, that scripture that Pastor Bob talks about a lot and there you go. But it's talking about the New Testament church, the first church and, and the very beginning. And it says they were continually and faithfully devoting themselves to the instruction of the apostles. You say, well, we don't have those apostles. No, but we have all their writings. <clears throat> we have all of the teaching right here. So the instruction of the apostles to the fellowship, to the eating meals together, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. And, you know, I've said this so many times, and I know that, but there are four things that every church ought to have. Instruction, teaching, fellowship, time just to get together, eating meals together, including communion, but also just meals you know, potluck, and I, I like to call them random blessings because we don't believe in pot and we don't believe in luck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and to prayer, praying together. You know, and if those four things are happening, folks, you have a vital church because that's the foundation for what it's all about. Well, folks, hope you have a great day. It's been great spending some time with you. I love doing this and thank you for joining me. And don't forget, you are blessed. So go and be a blessing.